I'm often asked, since there are lots of books on the United States Constitution, what's different about this one? And there are a number of ways it's different. Uh, let me focus on what I think are probably the two most important ones. One is that it really doesn't discuss at all how to interpret the Constitution, the whole issue of constitutional meaning. Uh, this is not a book in favor of originalism or against originalism, in favor of the living Constitution or against the living Constitution, um, which is the topic that tends to obsess law professors and tends to obsess most people who write books um, on the Constitution, because what they do is to confuse the Constitution as a whole with that relatively small part of the Constitution that is litigated and therefore is subject to debate as to what it means and therefore it provokes all of these incredibly acrimonious debates about particularly what Justice Robert Jackson once called the majestic generalities of the Constitution, equal protection of the law. Um, there are literally 108 logically defensible meanings of the word equal, and so we just are at each other's throats. I'm interested in the parts of the, litigation, the, parts of the Constitution that are never litigated. There's no debate about what they mean, but there ought to be a significant debate about their wisdom, because the central thesis of the book is that the Constitution that was drafted in 1787 and has not fundamentally changed since 1787, that is the parts of the Constitution I'm writing about, really are a contributing cause to the widespread belief that we have a dysfunctional political system that increasingly just doesn't have the capacity to respond to the kinds of issues that are most important to most American citizens.